A question I'm often asked is, which sewing machine should I buy? And I find that a really tough question to answer because we are all completely different. We do different types of sewing. We have different sewing experience, different machine experience, and also we have different budgets. But hopefully I can give you one or two tips so that you know what to look for. Now then, the first thing that I would do would be to sit down and write a list of what you want from a sewing machine. I'm a person who sews all the time and does a huge range of sewing. So I make garments from very sheer garments to heavily tailored garments. I make quilts, exhibition quilts and bed quilts. So very detailed work and more kind of everyday work. And I also do lots of home furnishing, you know, covering chairs, cushions, that kind of thing. And I don't have a different machine for all of those different jobs. I have a really good quality machine that copes with everything. Thing. So what do I mean by a good quality machine? I am extremely lucky and I'm not going to fib to you, you know, I sew on a Benina and it is Swiss engineering and it is not the only brand of sewing machine out there by any means at all. But it's a very sturdy and very robust machine. So it's solid, you know, it's heavy. It is not going to move around on the table when I get a bit of speed and I'm sewing a long line of curtain stitching with these little tiny plastic sewing machines will do. OK, so it's 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 very solid. It feels like it's kind of man enough for the job in that sense. Um, and it has a very strong motor. So smaller machines with smaller motors will not cope with really heavy, robust fabric. You may have come across that, you know, your needle will kind of falter and it won't go down into the work because there simply isn't the power to get it to work with that thick fabric. So, you know, if you are sewing robust work, you need a robust sewing machine. And I would say to you, the bigger the machine, the better, really. And again, I'm very lucky that I have got a large machine. But it has a big space in the um, under the arm, the throw area. And so that allows me to sew anything really well, because even a small thing isn't going to be creased up, is it? It'll lay flat. And if it's flat and spread out nicely, it's going to feed through with much straighter lines of stitching than if I've got a tiny little bunched up space. So so those things are important, but let's look at some more specific things. Now, I have sewn with the same brand of sewing machine for decades really and I have built up a huge collection of feet over the years and you can see just some of them here. I do think a brand of sewing machine that has a large selection of feet for different jobs is really helpful because there are, there are feet that are designed for specific things and they make a difference to the quality of the work and the finish that you can get. So though the range of feet is important, but also what I would say to you is not all sewing machine feet are well designed and not all of them have very good visibility at the needle point. So generally I prefer a foot that does not have a metal bar across the front of it obscuring my view. I like a kind of open toe foot so I can see what I'm doing. And the, the feet that I have, you know, they're, they're well designed, not just in their visibility. There's not too much metal. They allow the work to be fed in without having to lift the presser foot. There are lots of considerations there. And also they are incredibly easy to change. So they just sit on a pin and a little lever holds them in place. So I don't have to unscrew anything um, to remove them. They're really easy to remove. And the easier they are to remove, the more likely you are to change them to get the foot that is specific to the job that you are doing. So sewing machine feet are important. Now moving on, but in conjunction with sewing machine feet, ideally I think you need a machine that offers you at least two different stitch plates. And the stitch plate is usually metal and it's the part that the sewing machine foot clamps down onto when you are sewing. And when you buy a sewing machine, the stitch plate that comes with the machine has a long oval shaped hole that allows you to do zigzag and embroidery stitches, buttonholes, that kind of thing. But it's not the best option for regular straight stitch because the needle will push the work 
down the stitch plate and then pull it up again and it you don't get such good quality of tension and the stitch the line of stitching tends to move a bit um, and so I often use a straight stitch plate which has a small round hole instead of that long oval shaped hole okay and so you want a machine that enables you to swap the stitch plate but what is also important I think is that this stitch plate is easy to change and mine just clips on and off it's really quick and really simple and some stitch plates require you to get a screwdriver to one or two screws and they're a real faff and you are less likely to change them so it's like easy to change feet easy to change stitch plates really mean you will swap it when you need to and you will make the best job you can now my sewing machine also has a needle down function and it is invaluable. So every time I stop sewing, the needle goes down into the work. So let's say I've got to pause to answer the door or something like that. I need to stop my stitching. The needle goes down into the work and it holds everything in place so that when I come back and I start sewing again, the line of stitching is perfectly continuous. I can disengage if I want to. I don't have to use that function but I cannot do really great work without it and I quite often find that you know um, students will have a, a needle down function and not engage it if you have it and you don't use it I implore you to use it it is such a useful feature I struggle to sew with a machine that doesn't have the needle down function now, my other attachment that I really find I cannot live without is this, and this is a knee lift. It's a hands-free knee lift system. And when this is plugged or pushed into the sewing machine at the right-hand side of the sewing machine, I nudge it with my right knee and it lifts the press of foot. So all the time my knee is holding that over, the press of foot is raised. So let's say I am appliqueing um, a leaf onto a background and I've done um, one side of it and then I want to pivot to sew the second side. The needle down functions is, is on. I nudge my knee lift, the press of foot raises up and I can adjust the work exactly where I want to go to start my second line of stitching. Okay, I absolutely love this feature. I find it so useful. I do have a hover system that I can engage so that every time I stop sewing, the press of foot will lift slightly, but I don't like it because it lifts every time I stop sewing and sometimes I don't want it to lift whereas if so I don't engage that and I have the knee lift system on I lift when I want to lift not every time so that is something else that you might like to consider it takes a little while to get used to but once you've mastered it you will wonder how you ever stitched without it now if we look at the sewing machine itself the actual body design of the sewing machine is also important. So I've also mentioned the big space that I've got there and I do have the free arm so I can take my slide on table off and if I'm sewing around a cuff or the hem of trousers or something like that I can use the free arm. So if you are a person that does a lot of garment making then a free arm is probably uh, something that you want to have on your sewing machine. But when I talk about the bed of the sewing machine, if you can see here, it is completely flat. And that means that my hands support the work really well as it goes through and as the stitches are made. Um, quite a number of sewing machines will have a flat section around the stitch plate, but then the front of the machine will curve and be rounded. And I don't personally like that because one, there isn't anywhere for your hands to go so you're not supporting the work so well and you cannot add these um, additional slide on tray tables as easily you you I think you need that very flat surface I actually the same machine table that my machine set down to into has at least 11 inches from the needle point to the front of the table so I've got a big space to support the work as it goes through the same machine and another thing I'm going to just ask you to look at is the sewing machine end on. And look also when you're sat at the sewing machine, even though this is a big heavy duty machine, it's quite slim in this dimension from front to back. And it's fairly straight at the front. 
often the front will be built out so and then it will curve as it goes under towards the needle and then the sewing machine foot and it obscures your vision you cannot easily see what is happening as you stitch so do look at your visibility kind of when you are sat at the front of the machine as well now a quick chat about bobbins and how bobbins load you will either see a front loading bobbin or the bobbin coming from the top and it'll sit in front of the sewing machine foot personally i very much prefer front loading bobbins because if you imagine the bobbin in this orientation the thread is always going to be pulled off with the same kind of amount of gravity that there is no um, it's just continuous in that sense and when it is a top loading bobbin like so it isn't coming off with gravity it's kind of looping off and i find with students with that type of machine particularly with free motion work there will be certain um, kind of directions where you get eye lashing where the actual threads don't lock together very well and you get looping usually on the underside and I feel that's because the threads not coming off with gravity so gravity with the front loading is by far my preferred choice of the two options the lighting that comes with your sewing machine is also very important and this machine is particularly good it has really good bright white light and it has a kind of horseshoe shaped light so it isn't just one spotlight that causes sort of shadowing and it's not awfully bright so do look into that it is important if there's a sewing machine that you really like and it hasn't got really good lighting then you do need to think about supplementary lighting in your sewing space but good lighting is something else that um, I really suggest you have a look at so you've done some research online you've looked at various brands you've perhaps talked to your friends and they've given you they've all told you oh, you should get this brand you should get this brand you should get this brand you have to make your own mind up do lots of research online and then go to sewing machine dealers phone them up beforehand and ask them you know when you can you come to really try out the machines and take fabric with you take two or three different types of fabric with you maybe some sewing machine needles that, so that you can try out and sew with the types of fabrics that you use and don't feel rushed you know a good sewing machine dealership should give you the time to really sit with the machine and get a feel for it and when you do eventually buy your sewing machine don't expect that you are instantly going to know everything about it. I mean, I bought this machine in 2014, so it is coming up for nearly 10 years old. There are still things on it that I need to, re to remind myself about, you know, if I haven't done something for a long time. But I would say three months before you really get to know your sewing machine. So you've done all your research, you've tried your sewing machines out. You might be kind of tossing up between two or three different models. I'm going to try to suggest that price shouldn't really be your deciding factor. Yes, have a budget by all means, but if one machine just feels like it's going to be that little bit better for you as an individual and it's a little bit out of your price range, do your best to try and find that extra bit of money because it will not be money wasted. Think how many years you are going to use that same machine and nobody 10 years down the line ever regrets paying that extra £200. They regret not finding that extra £200 or dollars to put to that next model. So see if you can just go that little bit further but don't rush into it really take your time by the same machine that is right for you don't be swayed by all singing or dancing machines with lots of offers you do not need to do that stick to your guns choose the machine that you want and you will have so much happy sewing if you do that so good luck with that purchase